all of the loops, the for loop, the while loop, and the do while loop have r all the rules of scope and visibility, whether they are using braces or not. So, for example, this uh, integer x that was created right over here, even though apparently it is outside of the opening and closing brace over here, but it's still considered as if it's inside the world, inside the scope, the, the code block of this for loop, so it will only exist for the lifetime of this for loop, and as soon as we exit the for loop, that variable disappears, which means you can't use it anymore, and you can create a different variable with the very same name. And this will be the same rule if you're just like uh, having one simple one-lined empty for loop which just finishes with a semicolon and has nothing more than that. Um, over here too, the int x is still limited to the scope of this for loop, even though this doesn't have apparently any code block, it still has its own scope rules and this will only live as long as the for loop exists and it disappears after the for loop is done. So if you will try to use that x variable you will get a compiler error. So basically all the rules of scope and visibility that we explained in a different video all applies to all of these loops, whether they have an opening and closing brace or they don't. So like for example since we created the whatever variable over here so it is visible inside of this scope over here of the for loop um, however since integer x was created inside the for loop I can't use it after the for loop because it's done and every other rule that we explained in a different video so there you have it loops are a very important and powerful tool in programming it's what helps you do stuff that you need to do over and over again possibly hundreds maybe even thousands of times so you won't have to type something over again and again and again you can just make a loop which will execute a piece of code as many times as, as you'd like so have fun and play around with it um, you can have of course nested loops you can have a for loop inside of a while loop inside of a do while loop inside of another for loop etc etc an if statement inside of a for loop inside of another if statement etc etc play around and test a lot of this stuff to make sure you understand how they work and come to speak of if statements by the way here's a very interesting um, command that you can use in your code it's like a very compact if statement and it works like this first you type some sort of expression so let's say I'm sorry, yeah, you type some sort of boolean expression which means something that has to evaluate to either true or false. So let's say we type some sort of expression like testing to find out if A is more than or equals to B. Okay, here we have our boolean expression. This uh, operator over here, as we learned, will take whatever is on one side and test if it's more or equals to whatever is on the other side and as a result will express either true or false so here we have our little boolean expression if we want we could ra wrap it up in parentheses to make things a little cl clearer and here's our interesting compact if statement use the question mark operator so you could think of this as is this true with a question mark that's what's going on over here if this is true, then whatever you type next will happen. Like for example, uh, C out hello, like that. There we go. And then add a colon, not a semicolon, a actual colon. And then type something else that you'd like to happen if it's not true, like print by and then you finish off with the semicolon. So the important things to know over here is the question mark and then colon operator. We have three parts over here. The uh, boolean expression to be evaluated, the action that is taken if it's true, and the action that is taken if it's false. And as a matter of fact, these two parts over here can also be expressions. So what's happening over here is we are testing whether a is less or equals to, or we can have it more or equals to B. If that is true, 
which in our case it's not true because a is 9 and 9 is not more than 11 and it's not equals to 11. So if it would have been true we would see print out hello. Since it's not true then whatever is after the colon is going to be executed and we're going to see the word by as we see right over here compiling and we see the word by right over there. Now as I said actually this could be used as an expression so for example if you have uh, integer c and you want you don't know at this point in the program what what is inside a and what is inside b but you want the integer c to have whatever is bigger whether it's a or whether it's b so now you know how to do that what we're going to do is take advantage of the expressionness of this operation to give the integer c whatever is bigger so we're going to do like this c equals we want to give c whatever is bigger so here's how we're going to do it c equals is a more than b if a is more than b then we want to have the expression of a so now this is going to evaluate as c equals a because we are testing is a more than b and if it's true we are going to return the expression of a to this right over here because let's remember what does the assignment operator do the assignment operator will take whatever is on the right and try to put that into whatever is on the left but what's on the right over here is a pretty complex operation but actually this complex operation will return will give us an actual expression after it's done doing its calculations so first it has to do its calculations is a more than b if a is more than b then this it is the expression that is going to be given to the assignment operator if it's not true which means it has to be that a is less than b or maybe equals to b then we type b right over here and b is what is going to be expressed for the assignment operation so th basically this one line over here saves us of typing the whole thing over here even though it's true that over here it's a little bit more clearer because over here it's a little clearer that we are trying to test if a is more than b then c is the bigger one c is a else c is b but you can if you want to stuff everything in one line you can do that with this question mark and colon operator which again works like this in the first part over here a boolean expression is evaluated you can put it in parentheses if you'd like or you could leave it outside of parentheses which might make things a little bit more confusing so if this is true this thing over here is executed and expressed it is expressed to whoever would like to take it over here we have a assignment operator that is waiting for some expression on the right side over here so I guess the assignment operator is that is the one that's gonna get the expression of a if this thing is false then the second part is not done and is not expressed the third part will be done and expressed and so this is the expression that is going to be given to the assignment operator so don't get fooled by this little piece over here which looks like we're going to give a to c because we are not giving a to c for sure what's happening over here is something else that's why it's a little easier to put this inside of parentheses so that we know that there's a calculation going on over here and at the end of the day this will be just like c equals a and this will be just like c equals b as a matter of fact if you want to make it even a little bit clearer you can add one big parentheses which wraps up the whole operation so that now it looks a little bit clearer because we know that the assignment operator has to take something from the right side and put it to the left so now that we wrap this whole operation inside of parentheses we know that at the end of the day this whole operation over here will express one single expression which is going to be given to C then you know that when you look inside of the details you understand what's going on if A is more than B then this is going to be the major expression if A is not more than B then B is going to be the expression and that's a little bit more clear here's a pretty complicated formula of this compact if statement which calculates the return value of some functions evaluates more than one boolean expression there's a lot of things to try out and test